turn in your Bibles to our foundational verse for this series. Our key Bible verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 as we continue. The Onward Christian Soldiers Discipleship Class. This is uh, only uh, the number of classes that we have been recording. We have taught many Bible classes down through the years. This is number 209. Uh, how to Overcome Temptation. And we're being very specific about how to deal with various uh, temptations. And by the way, for those of you who are thinking about killing yourselves, committing suicide, uh, please understand that that's another temptation that the devil is putting before you and putting in your mind because he wants you to do something uh, that God does not want you to do and that is murder yourself. Understand that. It is probably the most uh, insidious uh, temptation but uh, there are many people thinking about killing themselves and I want you to know the devil is telling you that and is highly likely that if you kill yourself if you murder yourself today it is highly likely that you will go to hell so don't do that you need to do what the old black saints used to say quite often quite often the devil is a lie uh, you are listening to a lie. The devil specializes in lying. And what he's lying to you about is, and I'm bouncing from a dear sister who got saved a few years ago. And, uh, and for the first time she is revealing that publicly, that before she got saved she had a bout with suicide. Her dad had died uh, unexpectedly of a heart attack. She had just got through taking care of her mother who was battling breast cancer. Uh, she just went through a breakup. A very educated, living the dream woman. She had it all. Good looks, money, a great career. No one knew she was contemplating killing herself. And she said very clearly that uh, many people do not think uh, that people who seemingly have it all together oftentimes do not and uh, uh, and everybody said she would be the last person they would think would consider that but the devil is telling you lies one of the lies that uh, she says the devil tells you, uh, and I'm talking about the devil part, but she said that one of the lies she got in her mind was that her afterlife would be better than this life. That is a lie straight from the pits of hell, where you will probably be going, and if she had committed suicide, that's where she would have gone. She would have gone straight to hell. Okay, nobody's going to tell you that. There's not, there's not that many preachers who will tell you that today. But Jesus did tell you that. Jesus made it very clear that people who don't trust him as Savior will go to hell. So for those of you who are facing the temptation of murdering yourself, uh, don't do it. Say no. Just like... Uh, uh, my temptation is beautiful women and fun-loving women. And I have to tell myself no every day. Don't say that. Don't do that. Uh, don't even go near that. 
that's my temptation. I've never been tempted to kill myself. I love myself too much to do that. And I've been saved for, I guess, over half of my life. I got saved at the age of 19. <clears throat> so I, I got saved young, thanks be to God. I was still technically a teenager. And so I've never had any thoughts of suicide in my life. And so I don't even understand where that comes from other than I know it comes from hell and it comes from the devil. So if you are battling suicide, uh, that's where it's coming from and the devil is trying to destroy you to get you into hell where he's going. So don't do that as we deal with the subject of temptation. We're dealing with it rather specifically. Uh, and dealing with specific temptations uh, and not just in general because many people are faced with only one temptation. Some have two or three. Uh, money does not appeal to me. Material things do not appeal to me. I'm not tempted with that. I'm not tempted to steal, therefore, money or material things. Those things don't mean anything to me but a beautiful, fine fun-loving woman who knows how to handle a man is very enticing uh, to me. That's my only temptation. And, uh, and because God has chastised me so well many years ago, uh, that's the only reason why I'm not involved in that lifestyle today. Because God, I learned the hard way, does not like ugly. So, uh, with that said, let's deal with another temptation today. Let's read first our foundational verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. So, even the temptation of... Suicide is common to man, obviously, for it's been a tick up percentage wise, 25% over the past 10 years, I think they're saying. And since the suicide of uh, uh, Bourdain, uh, the suicide telephone lines are uh, ringing off the hook but so therefore we know that this is common to man just like my temptation is common to man and other temptations are common to men but God is faithful amen somebody by the way sister girl who gave that testimony is happy she did not kill herself. Uh, you can get over it and you can be victorious. And uh, she even mentioned that Oprah thought about killing herself. Others, she mentioned, thought about killing themselves at one time in their lives. But now they overcame that and they thank God. They thank God they didn't do so. God is faithful. Can somebody say amen? who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. God will make a way for you to escape. If you know Jesus Christ as Savior, and uh, that ye may be able to bear it. And then turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 22, verses 30, uh, 22, verse 33. The slothful man saith, There is a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. The slothful man saith, There is a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. Holy Father, God, uh, Lord, we, we all know that one of the biggest sins 
in the lives of all of us saved and lost is the sin of procrastination the sin of laziness the sin of slothfulness and Lord you know better than the rest of us that many people have exited this life having not completed what you sent them to do because of laziness and slothfulness and fear and worried about this that and the other lack of faith so many have exited this life who had plans they were going to write a book they were going to travel around the world but they never got around to it because they procrastinated because they were lazy and slothful and afraid Lord help us not to make that mistake uh, Lord help us not to yield to the temptation of laziness and slothfulness one of the ancient uh, seven deadliest sins for Jesus Christ's sake forgive us of our sins of procrastination laziness and slothfulness not doing what we know we should do for Lord you put us here to be productive in the world you like us being productive you like for us to accomplish things and to create things because uh, we're being more and more like you when we do that particularly when it helps other people or it encourages other people so Lord help us to repent of these sins help us to not yield to these temptations and Lord we pray that you would crush and crucify our flesh afresh and anew forgive us of all of our sins failures and faults as we from our hearts by your grace forgive those who've sinned against us and make all of us fit to uh, to uh, for your use not only to preach your holy word but to hear it and then to do it and Lord change us forever from this point forward and save that soul that is nearest hell and revive every Christian uh, help everybody uh, to uh, get on fire for you again and to start witnessing to the lost, those who are being, uh, who are being uh, tempted by the devil to kill themselves because they have no hope, because they don't know Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, you know all about it, but Lord, I, I am afraid that one of the reasons why there's been an uptick in suicides is because the church is too occupied with his own sins and wickedness and foolishness and arguments we're not out in the streets telling folk about you and Lord I, I have never thought about committing suicide I thank you for saving my wretched soul at the age of 19 at a young age and so I've never been tempted with that I'm, I have never thought about it and I've never been tempted with it because I got too much hope I got I have too much excitement too much joy because I have too much of you if you will inside of me and that's just an impossibility even though I'm tempted with other things in my flesh and so Lord I pray that you would help us to tell as many people as we can the glorious gospel the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ for we have heard even this morning also that the bad news uh, according to a Pew Research uh, article, the bad news, there's a, people are responding uh, in negative ways about all of the bad news uh, that's happening. So Lord, help us in the church to get busy about getting the good news to the lost and stop talking about the good news to people who already have the good news and who have applied it to their lives and maybe shut the doors and just tell everybody don't come to church go out into the streets and have church with other people and lead people to Jesus and then we'll see you in two or three months and you bring those bring the sheaves with you and then we'll have a shouting revival good time Lord, let your will be done. 
Help us to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways and to humble ourselves and give us a continued sweet victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. We know that the devil is going to attack this time. He always does. And he's going to attack after this time. So, Lord, help everybody to lift up their guard. Help us all to be prayerful, sober-minded, vigilant, and watchful. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his hosts from this time together. And uh, cast out the devil and his demons and his hosts and the satanic spirit of Judas, betrayal and sabotage and pride and foolishness out of the hearts and lives of those people who have that problem in their lives. It's a stinky problem. It's an ugly problem ungodly demonic problem and we pray that you cast out the same uh, the demonic spirit of Sanballat and Tobias people who hate every good work uh, people who try to hinder every good work yes even in the church and outside of the church people who just cannot stand your gospel your good news to go forward uh, these are uh, wicked, evil, and ungodly people, and some of them don't even realize the depth of their wickedness. Save their souls, open their blinded eyes, unstop their deaf ears. And Lord, we pray that you would stifle them, that you would thwart them, that you would stop them from hindering your work once again. And we pray for over three million souls to be saved, three million Christians to be revived. And, uh, Lord, your holy name glorified. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. You may be seated. The slothful man saith, There is a lion without. It shall be slain in the streets. I shall be slain in the streets. But that is a good way to think about it. If there's a lion without, uh, let's kill the lion. And let's do what we need to do. And staying, instead of uh, hiding behind your door, being slothful and lazy in your house, let's do something with the lion. Amen, somebody. Uh, let's kill the lion. That's in the streets. That's scaring the daylights out of you. That's a good way to look at it. Let's do something about the lion. Lion. Uh, don't, don't stay in your house lazy and slothful. Oh, there's that lion out in the street. There's that pit bull out in the street. I can't go to work today. That pit bull might bite me. That lion might bite me. Uh, I got my clothes on for work. I got my uniform on. Oh, honey, uh, children. There's a lion out there right over there. And then there's a pit, a pit bull right over here. The wife says, well, how far are you down the road? About a half a mile. Maybe you can get to the car yeah, and get on, get on in there and get to going. Uh, if, if the line is half a mile, they run that fast? I don't know. I don't want to test them while, while he's taking his work clothes off. <laughs> honey, I guess I'll get back in the bed with you. No, honey, don't come back in the bed with me. Go to work. Let me get my broom. Let me get my broom. And I'll ride out there, ride out there on my broom and, and scare that and shoot that line away for you. And that pit bull too. And she looks out the window. She sees the line. The line got gray hair. The line is laying down, chewing on something. And uh, the line is not even thinking about that man. He, she, the line is old as he could be. And the pit bull has got one leg cut off, and he's on three legs, and he can hardly run, and he's old. And she looks at him and says, man, you better get your behind out there and go to work. Come on, come on, I'll escort you with my broom. 
I mean, get on in the car. Stop this mess. Honey, but they might jump on my car and break through my window and bite my head off. Then you won't have a husband anymore. That's that's fine. If that happens, that'd be great. We'd be fine. You just go to work. And ladies and gentlemen, this passage presents the slothful or lazy man as willing to use any excuse even a fanciful one as a means of avoiding work isn't it amazing how people come up with all kinds of lies all kinds of tales about how they didn't do the work it's disgusting isn't it you know one of the most one of the most frustrating things for people who are in charge of people Many people don't realize that most people who are in charge of others, such as bosses, teachers, parents, they really don't want to have to discipline you. They really don't want to even be bothered with that. They want everybody to just simply do what they're supposed to do, take responsibility for what they're supposed to do, and just do it. They don't want to have to go through the discipline process. But I, I, I've shared many times, and other people have in their own words, that if you don't have discipline, you can't teach people anything. If, you, if you're trying to teach a child something, and they have the universal sign of boredom connected to them, that is, and the universal sign of boredom is the hand on the head like this right here, to, and talk, tilted to the side. That means they are bored to tears. They don't want to hear what you got to say. They don't want to read nothing that you're trying to read to them. That person right there will never learn anything. He's lazy. He's slothful. He, he, that, that, that child needs discipline. See, discipline instills in a person that you need to do this thing that is good for you but you may not think it's good for you. Uh, but it needs to be done for the good of your life or your future. You need to learn this so that you can work more effectively and be more productive in your life. So it's best for you to read this now and to study this now so that you can be a bad somebody laid on down the road. Without discipline, without correction about your laziness, which is, and your, your slothfulness, which is in your wicked flesh, then you can't learn anything and you will not be able to do anything. In ancient Israel, a lion in the streets of a city may have been an unlikely possibility of course but that potential lion did not prevent thousands of others from getting up and going to work every day how many bosses get a phone call from a joker in the bed who looks at the news at 5 o'clock in the morning, he's supposed to be at work at 7, and he calls in knowing nobody's at the job, but the recorder's on. Uh, he's lying in the bed. Uh, hey, boss lady, um, the weatherman said it's going to be storming today. And uh, I don't think it'd be wise for me to, to uh, head on out that way to work today. So I thought I'd give you a call. And, and, and how, many, how many of you know that bosses are trained to, they can tell by your voice how you are, uh, that you're lying down while you're talking to them on the phone. They can tell by your voice, they can tell. You can tell when people are lying down and they're half asleep and ready to go back to sleep. And that's how many people lose their jobs, that's how they get fired. Because there's always a line in the street. Once a week, there's a line in the street. 
whether it is a lion or some other excuse, the slothful person will use any means he can to avoid work. And, and this, this happens in many ways. People who are slothful, people who are lazy from their core, they hate work. They hate doing stuff. And by the way, if you are made to, ha to do things, that does not count. You're still lazy. You're still slothful. When you have to be chastised and you have to be prodded and you have to be pushed and you have to be re rebuked to do something, when you know you ought to do it, When you play the game of, he'll never remember it, so I'm not going to do it. When you play the game of skating, that is, you, got, you have a job, and this is, this is the reason why I try to encourage people to work for yourself. Because if you're not careful, particularly if you are a lazy person, you're going to be very unfair to that boss. Especially some folks I know in the hood. They call it skating. They're masters of looking like they're doing work. And they're constantly watching the clock. And that is unfair to the people uh, that are paying you, whatever they're paying you. And this mentality of, uh, well, if they pay me more, I would do more, but I'm just going to do what I think I'm getting paid. That's not right. Skating. This is old-fashioned, old-fashioned uh, idea from the hood. Skating, where you only work about a good two hours out of eight hours. You, 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 you work when the eyes are on you and you find something to pedal and pedal around and do it like you're doing something. When the eyes are not on you or you think the eyes are not on you and today they got eyes all over you. And they know whether or not you're working. That's laziness too. That's slothfulness as well. The lion may be in the street or not in the street, but that's wicked as hell. And by the way, that's why I encourage people uh, to get your own business, to be fair to other employers. If you're not going to give them 100%, watch that over there. You need to move away from that. If you're not going to give 100% to the employer who hired you to do a job, you need to start your own business. And you need to work for yourself. And maybe you put in a good day's work. Because it's not fair to that employer for you to steal three to four hours from him by being slothful and being lazy and your whole mentality and your whole attitude is oh man I could be doing this and I could be doing that I don't want to do this the whole time you're there but you, you, you're there on payday to take that check which you don't you have not even earned laziness slothfulness and that's why many jobs today they put you on a 90 day uh, probationary period see how you gonna work out are you a go-getter are you gonna be down for the job for the company see they want they want life us at the company man they want you to watch this now listen to me very carefully when you take on when you get hired it's not about you it's not it's not about you it's not just about you it might be 8% you, but it's about the vision of that boss for his company. And he wants not just laborers and workers, he wants family members, people who are committed to what they're doing. 
And they're going, they're going, they're going to find out in 90 days whether or not you're committed. Uh, and you don't understand that it's 92% the job and the mission of the job and 8% you where you get a little paycheck. And they'll find out whether or not it's 90%, 92% you and 8% them. And they're going to fire you. And, and, and in Texas, they know how to do it very sweetly and very kindly. No matter how angry you're getting, there's nothing you can do about it in Texas. You's got to go. You can be lazy bones all you want to. Uh, you're, not, you're not going to have that job. And they have people, they hire people to watch people like you. Some folk are mad at Amazon because Amazon, they do not play. There's no need to get mad at Amazon. Everybody loves that pay. Everybody loves getting that paycheck. People talking about they have to pee in bottles because Amazon is so hard about breaks and things like that right there. Uh, I don't think they're that hard. But they want you to produce. They want you to be down for the cause of Amazon. And if you're not down for the cause of Amazon, you, you don't want to buy into the mission, then don't work for Amazon. Amazon does not play. And all of and by the way, you may not think so, but all of your neighbors, they love Amazon. And you love Amazon. Particularly if you're a prime time member. You order anything and in two days it's going to be at your front door. You don't have to go anywhere. From food uh, to a refrigerator. They flat get it done. And if you're not down about getting it done and hustling and getting it done, if you're not energetic, if you're lazy and slothful, it's not going to work for you. You don't need to go out there and try to work for Amazon. Because Amazon is like any other job. It can be fun if you are a go-getter. And you like a challenge. But you got to be down for their mission. And their mission is once a person orders something, they want it the next day or two days and that's it. And you have got to get it done. You got to get it, get it, get it. And if you're not interested in working in that environment, start your own Amazon. And, and you work for your own company. Maybe, maybe you might want to call your company Slow Poke Delivery Company. Or you might want to call it Lazy Bones Incorporated. We will get your package there when we get good and ready. And you're going to be good and broke as well. Because folk want their... Amazon has changed the game forever. And if you want to be a part of that environment, then you got to be down for what they want. And they tell you that up front. And most companies are that way today. you got to be for the cause. You've got to be down for the cause, down for the mission. You say, well, I'm a Christian, and so I don't believe I ought to move that fast. I want to meditate a little while and think. Well, then you, you might want to go work down at the chapel, okay? You want to meditate because <laughs> you come, you, you, you see, but you want that paycheck while you're meditating on Friday, see? You, you want that paycheck Friday on payday. So uh, be fair to the employers and give them all you've got once they hire you or you will not have a job. The same dangers that work presents are presented even more so in consistent laziness. Yes, laziness, a lack of work, can kill you. And this is a fact. The World Health Organization 
counts physical inactivity as the fourth largest global killer. Did you get that? Uh, allow me to repeat that in your hearing. Uh, the WHO. The World Health Organization counts physical inactivity as the fourth largest global killer. They asked Dr. Charles Stanley, when are you going to stop preaching? He said, no, I don't, I don't I, when are you going to retire? I said, he said, the Bible don't say, it does not say anything about retirement. And uh, he said, uh, anyway, uh, you keep on working, you'll keep on living. So you live longer when you keep on working longer, see. So I, I have no plans on retiring. I don't know, that's, that's not in the Bible. I don't see that in the Bible. I'd rather die in the pulpit. I'm just going to keep on trucking along, and uh, when God calls me home, I, I'll go, and then I'll retire then. How about that? And all of us should have that mentality. Retire, retire to do what? Sit on the porch? And become more decrepit? And... Uh, Blood's not flowing through your body because it's all in your butt, sitting down all day long, pooling in your butt area, in the stomach area, all in the middle section where it ought not to be. It should be in, the, in those legs, those toes, going up to your brain. Get that blood to go and keep on working, doing something. Retirement to do what? Sit in a vehicle and travel and go to this, to this place and that place, the place you've already seen on TV a thousand times, just to say you've been there. Keep on working. Keep on doing something worthwhile. Keep on thinking. Not only, not only physical activity, but mental activity. Keep on reading. Keep on writing. Uh, I forget what they call it. It's something. Uh, it's like a, they, they call it a, a conscience stream of something, whatever, something like that. But they recommend that you write. You write every morning. You write three pages every morning, particularly if you're a writer. Nothing will force the blood and force some. Uh, uh, Things to keep your brain going, like writing, buddy. You got to you got to think. Reading a book that is not familiar to you. This morning, I early this morning, I went to a site. I I can't think of the name of it, uh, and I, I'm going to try to do it uh, once a day. I'm in the process of learning Spanish. And there's a free site. You don't have to spend all that money to learn Spanish. There's a free site online that will teach you how to do Spanish. And, it, and they, they give you tests on, on Spanish right then and there. And that forces you to learn something. Every last one of you ought to try to learn a language that's not yours, your native language. The smart people are doing that, by the way. The little rich children, the parents uh, that have these, uh, the rich parents who have these these children, they're learning Chinese. That's the that's the going thing today. If you live in Texas or any part of uh, uh, the uh, lower part of America, it'd be wise for you to learn some Spanish. Because you're going to meet some Spanish folk. And if you do a little bit every day, you'll keep your brain going. Don't be, don't retire. Don't get lazy. You'll live longer. And you'll live a healthier life. Dr. Nick Knight, writing in the Independent, a British newspaper, said, Inactivity has its price tags. 
It is linked to the development of chronic health problems like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, depression, dementia, and cancer. He is not talking about an exercise regimen or vigorous physical work, but the basic human activity that occurs when one gets out of the bed in the morning, gets off of the couch, and disciplines his mind and body to be productive. Examine your life. What are you, what, what do you have, if anything, on a to-do list? Do you have a lifetime to-do list? Parents, are you encouraging your children to live their lives on purpose, with goals and aims? God put you here to do something. And God is not trying to hide that something from you. And by the way, if you uh, are living your life on purpose and you have some one, two, threes down on paper and you have some ABCs down on paper, and you have a grand goal and aim in life, you want to accomplish this or that or the other, I assure you that will keep you from thinking about killing yourself. You have too much to live for. Joseph XL notes the following regarding the slothful man prescribed or rather described in this passage. Number one, the sluggard's tongue is not slothful, is it? Isn't it true that the laziest people talk the most? I was watching uh, something in passing last night. There's a show on Oprah's channel called Sweetie Pies. Uh, it's very popular. Uh, and... Uh, there's one character, and we don't, want, we don't want to call him a character because it's supposed to be a uh, reality show. Uh, there was one, there's one guy who was always getting in trouble because he was not doing his work. He never did his job, but he talked the most, always had an excuse. And the boss had to constantly tell him, can you please shut up just for a little while and just do your work? Can you please just be quiet and do your work? Isn't it true? The people who are the laziest, the people who don't get their job done, talk the most. They always have something to say. And he goes on to say, the man who is lazy is generally busy with his tongue. There are no people that have so much to say as those that have little to do. And then number two, the sluggard's imagination also is not idle. Laziness is a great lion maker, isn't it? He who does little dreams much. His imagination could create a whole menagerie of wild beasts that would hinder him from work. He can sit on his couch and think of a thousand reasons not to do something instead of getting out there and doing it. In fact, he could spend more time imagining things than it would take to do the thing. So in other words, just do the doggone thing, man. And then you, you can come back and sit down on your couch with your remote control and enjoy uh, a little break. In fact, you would enjoy it more. I'm a big believer in doing something first, doing your job first, doing what you know God wants you to do first, and then sit down and enjoy yourself. I am a firm believer in that. I cannot imagine living life any other way. 
this idea of just relaxing and laying down and binging on a whole series in one day and all that, that's foreign to my mind. I'd rather watch, I'd rather get a whole lot of work done and then watch one episode of a good, of a good series. Number three, the sluggard takes great pains to escape from the pain of work. This lawful man had to use his inventive ability to get himself excused from doing his duty. It is an old proverb that lazy people generally go through the most trouble to keep from work. Isn't that true? I believe that. They will go through doing something else for four hours that means nothing so that they can excuse themselves from doing some serious work. And so, beloved, if you struggle with sloth or laziness, take this passage to heart. Take heed to it. Begin to use it the next time you face this temptation. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Wherever we, wherever we open it, it will do something in our hearts and lives. And uh, we know that your holy word, when it goes out, does not come back void. And so have mercy and grace upon those of us who are lazy and who are slothful, and who do not want to work. And Lord, we pray that you would help everybody who has that problem to repent and to turn from their evil ways. And Holy Father God, we pray that you would, those of us who don't mind working, who in fact enjoy it, particularly once we get started, Lord, help us to work even more and uh, do it with great joy for your glory, praise, and honor and enjoy the benefit of it. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you are with us today and you do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you don't have the work. This is one thing you don't have to work for, and that is salvation. Jesus Christ did all of the work for you. He paid the price. He paid your sin debt. He did it all. He came and lived a perfect life, a holy life. He was tempted like you and I are, but he never sinned. Yes, he was tempted even to be lazy, but he did not yield to that temptation. He went on to the cross for you and for me. He did all of the work. He paid our sin debt. He is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Jesus Christ himself said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, his name is Jesus. He was talking about himself, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that is, perish in hell, but have everlasting life. The Bible also says in Romans 10.9 and 13, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Jesus was not lazy. Jesus went to work for you and for me. Jesus did his work. And the only work you have to do to be saved, according to Jesus, 
is believe on Him. That's all you have to do. You don't have to work in a church to be saved. You don't even have to march down an aisle in a church to be saved. You don't have to feel the pain of embarrassment when you have to stand in church because the preacher is demanding that you stand. You don't have to give any money. You don't have to do the work of giving any money to the church to be saved. All of these things are fine and dandy. There's nothing wrong with them, but you don't have to do them to be saved. The work is already done. Jesus paid it all. Your sin debt has been paid, and Jesus is ready and willing to pardon you of all of your sins. You can be pardoned and forgiven and let out of uh, the prison of your sin today by just trusting in Jesus Christ. Believing the gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. And praying and asking him to save you. For the Bible makes it very clear. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you want to be saved today, you're willing and you are actually doing it right now. You're believing in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. I'll be glad to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer. Just repeat after me and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. I've done wrong in your sight. I have broken your Ten Commandments by lying, by dishonesty, by coveting and lusting after people and things that don't belong to me, by taking your name in vain, by stealing things that don't belong to me. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins, all of my violations, all of my crimes against your kingdom. Please, Holy Father God, have mercy and grace upon me and forgive me of all of my sins as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent of my sins past. And to follow you in the new life. For the rest of my life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now dear friend of mine. If you just trusted Jesus Christ as your uh, Lord and Savior. And you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart. I declare to you that based upon the word of God in the Bible, not your feelings, not my words, not your words, but the word of God in the Bible, you are now saved from hell and you are on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God, dear friend. And I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life. And that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com. Many thousands have. And read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. 
Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me of any man into in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you, is my prayer. <laughs>